Hello and welcome to the video. Before we get started, if you'd like to provide input on future content and get our weekly newsletter, click on our survey. Uh, the link will be below. We also have uh, a report on Ethereum 2, along with a bonus report on why you should learn Solidity now. Again, the link will be below. Now on to the video and thank you. Okay, so to better understand what we've been trying to do, um, I wanted to take uh, some time to discuss Solana accounts. Uh, and I found a couple of good articles here. This is the Solana Wiki. Um, basically, it's, a, it's different from Ethereum. Ethereum has separate accounts that are, has basically separate accounts for um, programs and, and for users. In Solana, the accounts are structured the same, but they have different types of things. Um, if you notice here, Solana basically, I mean, sorry, Ethereum basically has a nonce, which is number of transactions sent from this account and then the balance. And then they have a separate structure for um, code accounts. In Solana, the structure is the same. The balance, which is LAM points, the owner, um, whether this account can process instructions, uh, the raw data, byte array stored by this account, and the next time it's going to own rent. And um, so they, they talk here about uh, account storage, a map, they're talking about a map with a 256 bit key space, etc. So um, in the Solana VM, all accounts can store data, but again, emphasizing the fact that executable accounts, their data is immutable. If it, and that, so, and that's the difference between one big difference. It, you know, it's, it's the immutable bytecode of the instructions. For a user account, it's the, you know, they can store data that to keep track of things, um, different things. Uh, and um, we, we're going to demonstrate that or show that in an example. Um, the account owner, they talk about the account, uh, they've, sys, they have um, SysVar accounts, native loader. These are special. Um, so, uh, again, we talked about immu immu immutability, data allocation, um, and they have some rules here. Only the owner may modify its data. Only the owner of an account may subtract its LAN ports. Any program account can add LAN ports. Hey, you don't mind someone giving you money, right? Um, only the owner of the account can assign new owner, and this is the rent, and uh, it's, it's determined by the account size. And um, accounts with sufficient balance covered two year rent are exempt from fees. And they talk about what happens zero balance will be deleted, temporary accounts with zero balance may be created, etc. So this talks pretty much about accounts. Solana also has this, their own wiki page, which has some slight, goes into rent calculation, rent exemption, and um, ownership and assignment, executables, uh, similar stuff. But what really interested me is this example here. So you have, um, this talks in terms of security. So you have an example here where you have a public struct config. Uh, let me go back to the original example to show you. 
and that has a public key uh, 30 U32 um, B and a U32 user account. So, uh, and what happens is they can deserialize the, this is the account data. They can deserialize it and then here withdraw tokens and that they have their, um, let's see where that's done. They do some owner check here and the transfer the funds. But the problem that they point out here is they go through an example here of how someone can um, basically hack it because they can, you know, map it in. They can create an account and it's not going to know that it's not a legitimate account because of the structure of config. So what they talk about here is this, you know, giving it a unique uh, identifier and that allows an additional check that cannot be uh, hacked. Because it's when you map it in, if it's not the right, specifically the right thing, it's going to fail. But what that gets into is one of the issues is how, what is this account data and how do you deal with it? Um, how do you get to it? So that's where this um, deserialize account data borrow and it maps it directly into config here. And um, then you can then access this in, in your program. So very interesting to do whatever it, you know, what it needs to do. Let me see, did I pull up the, oh, I, the one other thing is I wanted to show uh, let's go, this is just a, okay, thought I might have pulled it up, I'm trying to see if I have it here, oh, we'll just pull it up, um, Lana, GitHub, very easy to find, and just go right here, and under, if you scroll, is the original code for our um, example, hello world, right here. And if we look at the source to the, yeah, hello, there we go. Program Rust, Source, and LibRS. Okay, so notice they have this greeting account defined right here. And they get the account. And let's see where it is. Greeting account. So they are, because the greeting account is using Bor or serialize and deserialize, this is how they get the account data, which has the greeting account right here. So by doing this, it is, since this is, it's saying, take this data, deserialize it, and throw it into this variable, this mutable variable, called greeting account, which is of this format, greeting account, which is already defined having the counter. So this will give us an idea of how we're getting data in. The instruction, the instruction which we talked about, that is usually, I think, trying to pass data. You can pass data, I suppose. The key thing with the instruction is that's how you 
tell it what to the program what to do. In this case, we don't need to tell it. Um, I'm thinking that perhaps you can pass a string and then maybe if you have the count data had the string, do something of that nature. So anyway, um, I'm ho hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully we have a better understanding now of how this account data works and how the differentiation between that and the instruction. Again, account data is where you store things for a particular user account that is going to be carried over. And the, the instruction is essentially provides direction. So anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. And um, thank you for watching. And I will speak to you next time. Take care.